I'm all about trying to foster as much positivity as possible. I know that's hard to believe considering I'm getting ready to complain about what gymnastics has turned into, but what are you gonna do? Trivia bitches, welcome to my channel. 2021 wasn't the best year for me personally, and I know it wasn't for a lot of people either, so we're just going to try to leave that whole dumpster fire of a year behind and keep it moving on to the next, on to bigger and better things. So I didn't really know what my next video was going to be about, but one day I was just watching old videos on YouTube, as I'm prone to do, and I came across a couple of comments that had me screaming at my phone, which I'm sure is a perfectly normal human reaction, and suddenly I had two video ideas. So one of the comments I'm gonna do for this video, and then the other one we will save for the next one because trying to put them both into one video to quote contra points, it would make it centuries long and ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for my videos being eight minutes long, so. I apologize in advance, this probably will be longer than eight minutes. Sorry about us. So I think the best approach is to watch the routine in question and then get into the comments about it. Sound like a good idea? Cool, cool, because that's what we're going to do. <laughs> the subject of our video is Natalia Frolova, who never made a major Soviet team. Natalia Frolova, the music, Sinfonia per un adio by Ronzo Veneziano. Natalia's favorite events. I think you'll see why. She really enjoys herself out there. 15 years old from Leningrad. And this is one of the most legendary and influential routines in the entire canon of Soviet gymnastics. Oh, I love that. I just love this choreography, every single skill is revelatory. Whip through to triple full. And starting right here. Can't wait to see him in competition. This okay. feeling Incredible. is so friggin' phenomenal. So much feeling. This is what the Russians do so well. So beautiful. <laughs> I call these the Natalia Frolova Arms of Joy. Oh, that Arabian dive roll. So good! The timing is just so perfect. Every single skill is not wasted. That ending, the way she doesn't waste a single moment and holds out every move, mind blowing. So that routine was an exhibition from right before the 86 Goodwill Games. It was called Gateway to Goodwill. The comment I'll be reading about is from a different competition. It was the 86 Craft International. Exact same routine, except Natalia did an even harder middle tumbling pass of one and a half twist through to triple twist in 1986. For purposes of context, this was the exact same pass that Nastya Grishina balked on at the team finals during the 2012 Olympics, AKA the darkest day of all. Even 26 years later, this pass was still considered very difficult and it still is to this day. Okay, so this is the comment. Beautiful, my one complaint about the 80s Soviet routines is how that, I think they mean they, how they all did extreme cowboy double backs slash full ends and got no deduction for it. That and the bent legs on her twists ruin it for me. So 
That is a lot, so let's bisect this comment and tackle it piece by piece. So a couple things here. First of all, I don't like how the poster seems to be singling out the Soviets because... Also, it wasn't just the Soviets who had form issues on their tumbling passes. Due to the progression of the equipment, it was very difficult to do these skills with perfect form. Almost all the gymnasts had some type of form deduction with their tumbling. If we compare it to 2021 standards and what is expected when it comes to e-score deductions, I would almost say having perfect form back then was the exception. I've also thought that perhaps they're insinuating that the Soviets were the only ones who weren't deducted for their form problems, but even if that is what they're implying, that's also untrue. Perhaps some Soviets did get more of a benefit of the doubt, but as Kathy says, spending that much effort on dance is exhausting. That level of dedication and even attempting to put any kind of art into the sport was very much appreciated by the judges, and for good reason. I absolutely think they deserved credit for it, as did any gymnast who went the extra mile. Second, why wasn't it deducted for? Well, who says it wasn't? I looked up for all of a score for this routine, and it was a 985. That means the judge is deducted for something. Now, I don't have a copy of the 1985 to 89 code of points in front of me, but I'm not even sure that there were specific form deductions the way you would think of now. The code back then was based on the concept of ROV, or risk, originality, and virtuosity. Frolova's middle pass alone checks off the first two of those boxes easily. So having less than stellar form on a very difficult and innovative tumbling pass in 1986 was understood and forgiven, as it should be in my opinion. I think one of the issues that newer gymnastics fans may not understand is back then, routines were judged much more in a big picture fashion, not singling out individual trees instead of looking at the entire forest as a whole. The way the open-ended code of points is written, where each and every element is looked at and picked apart, <laughs> is completely antithetical to this premise that was in place back then. Also, there were times when I think gymnasts who did have perfect form did not get the credit they deserved. I recently wrote a recap of the beam final at 89 Worlds where I talk about how Chen Kui Ting was robbed of a spot on the podium because she had textbook form on her tuck double back dismount. Her legs were glued together and her toes were pointed. That was completely different to almost every other gymnast in the final who did that dismount, including the gold medalist, Daniela Silavash, and the bronze medalist, Gabriela Potorak. They all had some variation of a cowboy, some worse than others, but none of them had those legs together the way Chen Quiting did. I think overall during this era, form on tumbling elements just wasn't scrutinized as harshly. I mean, low landings were basically ignored 95% of the time, as long as you didn't stumble out of the landings. Not to specifically call out Oksana Milianchik, but if you look at her routines with a 2021 Coda Point lens, RIP to her e-score, but back in 1985, she actually won the world title on floor exercise. I don't want to live in a world where Emilianchik wasn't successful because she was excoriated for landing with her chest down on her tumbling. Next part. Ruin it? Ruin? Really? Ruin. Oh, that was way harsh, Ty. I think this comment is referring specifically to her middle pass, and we talked again about how innovative and risky this was back in 1986. Now, I could be reading it wrong, but this statement implies that the less than ideal form on her tumbling ruins the entire routine for this poster, which 
is why I'm making this video, basically. I could not disagree more. The slightly bent legs on her twist don't bother me in the slightest. And that is because, again, and I'm probably starting to sound like a this pass was so far ahead of its time. And to me, it didn't distract at all from the strengths of this routine, the artistry, the performance value, the feeling. All these things are in fact completely disassociated or detached from the tumbling. That's just me though. Gymnastics is inherently a subjective sport and everybody looks at things and evaluates things differently. Different things are important to different people. But again, ruin is a word with such strong connotations. I also find it ironic that this poster cares very much about Frolova's bent knees on her twists, but not so much about the wonderful leg extension throughout her dance, the impeccable carriage across the floor, the wonderful flexibility and body line, the precise timing, and the way she expertly hears this beautiful music and makes it her own is just very interesting to me. One thing about subjectivity is it means we all have our preferences. Apparently this poster cares a great deal about tumbling form, which to me is a very recent and open-ended code of points way to look at the sport. And obviously in 2021, and for many years now, there's no excuse to have bad form with the amazing equipment we now have in place. But when one looks at the e-score and what its purpose is, its intent is to be completely objective and therefore completely irrelevant to artistry, which is almost an entirely subjective concept. I'm not sure those two worlds can coexist. Although the sport is literally called artistic gymnastics in English, artistry has all but been banished and ostracized and put into a tiny deduction from the e-score, which is inconsistently applied with no reason given. Sometimes we don't even find out who got artistry deductions until years after the fact, and sometimes we never find out at all. Artistry is barely worth the trouble anymore, as we've seen time and time and time again over the past 15 years. In my opinion, <laughs> And I cannot stress this enough. This is, in my opinion, the past three Olympic floor exercise champions have not had a sufficient amount of artistry. The most recent champion is perhaps the most egregious example of all. Yet in a recent poll created by a prominent gymnastics YouTube channel, Jade Carey is considered a better floor worker than Ksenia Afanasyeva, Lauren Mitchell, Sandra Isbasha, and Vanessa Ferrari by a comfortable margin. <laughs> when I saw those results, I was shook. Mama, the well's done been poisoned. Do not drink the water. Call it recency bias or the pandemic has caused a large percentage of folks to lose their taste. But I think it runs even deeper than that. The problem is clearly much worse than I thought. Gymnastics has turned into this bizarre and complicated mathematical equation where difficulty is paramount and execution, or how well you perform said difficulty, is the next most important element. If this were the PIMDAS order of operation tool, artistry would be the addition and subtraction when in my my opinion, it should be the fucking parentheses. <laughs> In any case, I have tried my best just to agree to disagree when it comes to matters such as artistry and a subjective sport such as gymnastics. Clearly, I still have my opinions and I love debating them with people. I like to see all sides of an issue. I love things that are nuanced. So if anybody can bring something to my attention that I may have overlooked, I really value that. You know, we're always learning. We're always growing. I'm not saying it's my way or the highway. I'm open-minded to seeing other points of view. It doesn't mean I have to agree with them, but I'm open to looking at them at least. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Bon journey and have a great rest of your day. And again, a happy new year. Bye loves.